In this chapter we're going to take a look at what are called quadratic functions and basically what we're doing is kind of the same thing we did at the start of the year but now that we've learned a little more about polynomials and exponents we're going to start to look at other functions other than linear functions. For example, if you take a look at the equation that you see on the screen, go ahead and copy it down, y equals 3x plus 2 and I ask you to graph it. I know every one of you is looking at this and you know certain things about it. You know that the fact that this comes in the format y equals mx plus b like we learned this year and the year before that we know it's going to be a linear function meaning we're going to get a nice straight line. And there's probably other things you guys could tell me too. You could tell me that this is going to have a slope of 3 or 3 over 1 because we know that that number next to x represents the slope and the rise and run that that line is going to follow. We know that this number, positive 2, is going to be the y-intercept. And so you could guys could easily graph this because we know that these numbers represent certain parts about the visual graph that goes with it. So what we're going to do today is revisit those same ideas, except what happens when we change our function to a quadratic. Now what we mean by that in terms of the word quadratic is something we learned in the last chapter that when it comes to these polynomial expressions like x squared plus 3x plus 2 of these three number uh, terms in the trinomial this one has the highest degree of 2 and 2 is a quadratic function. Now just like with linear functions these numbers mean something and that if we understand the connection between what these if we change these numbers how they change the graph we can make certain predictions about what that graph will look like. So one of the first things you need to understand is just like with linear functions where it was y equals mx plus b quadratic functions have a certain look too. So also go ahead and copy this down. This is what we call the standard form of a quadratic function. Anything that's a quadratic function will take this shape where y equals ax squared plus bx plus c a, B, and C just represent real numbers. Negatives, positives, decimals, zero. They're just numbers in front of each of our terms. And so if it fits this format, then we know it's going to be a quadratic. Specifically this part we've added in, this x squared. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to play around with this function a little bit, so maybe we can start making some predictions about the graph. So to save us a little bit of time, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to go to the internet and I'm going to use a online graphing calculator just like the graphing calculators we have and you'll notice here I put in the standard form of a quadratic. Now what I'd like to do let's start with just the basics and take this quadratic function and let's make it as simple as we possibly can. Since x squared is the important part let's focus on that. In this case what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a 1, 1x one squared. Keep it simple. And to make it even more simple, the rest of this, I'm going to make b 0. So 0x, zero and I'm going to make c 0 also. And so in fact, by doing that, no matter what x is, these zeros will just disappear. And I'll just get 1x squared, or even better, x squared. And look at our graph. This is what is called the parent graph, because it's the most basic quadratic function that you can make and so if we were to change numbers this is the the main equation that we're changing it's it's the parent of all the graphs we make so if I start making changes like making this 4x squared I can see the relationship between our parent graph and the new graph with the 4 being changed now one of the first things I'd like to take a look at is what if we make just the simple adjustment of making a, a positive number versus a negative? For example, let's say we started off with the uh, a graph of 3x squared. So I'm going to change my parent graph to 3x squared. So that's our new graph. And I'm going to compare it to, say, negative 3x squared. Didn't keep my original one. Let's put the other, other one back in. Okay. There we go. So here's 3x squared. This shape in our parent graph and this shape down here, these are what are we what we call parabolas. A parabola, the best way to think about it is the picture you would get if you threw a ball up in the air. That ball goes up, 
over time it comes back down and forms this arch. Okay, parabola also counts if it's one of these ones where it's upside down or it's this U-shaped parabola. But notice what happens with the difference between the negative and the positive. Positive 3x squared is this one. It's this U-shaped graph. Negative 3x squared is this one. Let's go back to our parent graph again. What if I just change it back? There's our parent graph. Now in this case, A is positive because it's 1x squared. But now what if I were to change that? What if I made it negative 1x squared? Well again, what I get is the mirror image of the original parent graph, except it's a U, uh, upside down U shape. Well, it turns out this holds true for anything. Let's say we started off with, I don't know, uh, make it interesting, 0.2x squared. And then we did changed it to negative 2x squared. Ah, it keeps changing my parent graph. Sorry about that. There we go. Well, again, here's 0.2x squared. Here's negative 0.2x squared. Turns out, when it comes to A being positive or negative, this holds true all the time. All right, let's take a look. So the idea is this. That is something we can predict. If this is how we write our quadratic functions, this number right here, A, is really important because automatically when I look at that, just like we saw in the examples, when A is a positive number, it turns out we get a graph that looks like this in general. A parabola that opens upwards uh, or a U-shaped parabola. And no matter what A is, if it's a negative number, it turns out that we get a more of an arch, an upside down U-shape. So go ahead and copy this down because this is one of the things we're going to use to answer some of the questions in our work today. When that number in front of x squared, the coefficient in front of x squared is positive, we get a U-shaped parabola. When A is negative, upside down shape. And in fact, you know, I should probably include this here. Just put it kind of like a column. We'll use this as the title. This is how you spell parabola. P-A-R-A-B-O-L-A. -A -A. Okay, so these shapes are called parabolas. Alright, now, that way, let's say you were to copy these two problems in your notes right now. While you're copying them, let's say I asked you to graph it. Well, right away, before you even graphed it, you could now tell me, in general, what that graph is going to look like. Now, you know, some of these numbers, we're not quite sure what they mean. The 4 in front of the x, this minus 2 towards the end, we haven't talked about those yet. But at the very least, we can look at a. a is always that number in front of x squared, both here and here. And you could tell me right now which way these graphs open up. In this case, a is positive 3, which automatically means when I'm done, what I should get is an upwards opening parabola, a U-shaped parabola versus this one. A is negative 5 and because it's negative I automatically know regardless of the 7 or any other numbers I know it's going to be opening downwards. It's going to be an upside down U-shape. Alright, so this is one of the things you can use to start predicting what graphs will look like and what how the numbers relate in the quadratic function to our graphs.